Hey y'all, welcome to a new week of dinner ideas. So we started off our week with these chicken fajito nachos. I have been craving this meal for a hot minute. I like to order this sometimes at our local Mexican restaurant and I've been wanting to try it at home for a bit. So I finally did it. I made some homemade queso for the first time as well as some homemade chips and this meal was incredible. So let me show you exactly what I did. So I have two boneless skinless chicken breasts that I just pulled from my freezer and thawed out. I picked up a red and green bell pepper and I actually meant to pick up a fajita seasoning packet at the store but I forgot. So luckily I had this like mojito, lime, like marinade mix in my pantry. Um, I've had it there for a while and I thought that would be a really fun twist and just so me because I am obsessed with limes. So I started by slicing up my chicken into just little thin strips and I transfer that to like a gallon Ziploc bag. So now I'm just going to prepare this little marinade mix. So I just poured it into a bowl and I'm just following the directions on the back of the package. So all I had to do was add in some olive oil, some apple cider vinegar, as well as some water. And that was it. So I just pulled out my whisk, whisk that together, and I am just going to Pour that over top of the chicken and seal it up. Um, you can marinate this for as long as you want to. If you have your life together and can think to do it the day before, you could let this marinate overnight or you can do it in as little as 15 to 20 minutes. So I just popped that in the fridge and I washed my peppers and got those sliced into little strips. As I always say, if you like onion, throw you one in. I know that's really traditional with this dish. Uh, but I just got my cast iron skillet heated up with some olive oil. And I'm going to go ahead and dump my chicken in. I'm going to make sure to try to get it in a single layer just so that everything can cook up evenly. But this takes no time at all, especially since it's like in thin pieces. But once that was fully cooked, I did go ahead and transfer that to a separate bowl. And I did want to mention that, you know, I did wash those tongs before doing this step since it did touch the raw meat. And, you know, since it's silicone, I don't let it just sit in that skillet to like cook anything off. So that's just something I'm paranoid about. So figured I'd mention it. But to that same skillet with all that leftover marinade, I'm going to go ahead and cook up my peppers. And I'm going to season those up with a little bit of onion powder. So, again, this is one of those things that you just cook to your preference. If you want them to be crunchy, just cook them less. Um, if you want them to be more soft, cook them longer. But I probably did like three to four minutes. I wanted those to get a little bit of a char on them. And then I just dumped the chicken back in with all the juices that kind of accumulated. Let those two things marry together. And I'm going to pop that in my oven at 200 degrees just to keep it warm. Now on to the queso. For the ingredients, I have some white American cheese slices. One can of diced green chilies. You're going to need some half and half and some garlic salt and cumin. So I just pulled out like a medium sized saucepan and I'm going to add in half of that package of cheese. So you'll need 12 slices. And I do really like grabbing the great value brand, like the purple package, because it doesn't come like individually wrapped in the plastic wrappers. So it's perfect for stuff like this and it just makes it go by a lot quicker. Now, the recipe that I was looking at called for a quarter cup of half and half, but I actually ended up using closer to a half a cup, if not more, to get it to the consistency that we liked. But I just melted that over like a lowish temperature, and once it got to that consistency that we liked, I added in the green chilies as well as the seasonings. And I will go ahead and say that this does not need the garlic salt. I'll just leave that out next time because the cheese is plenty salty. Uh, but that was it for the queso. So now onto the chips. So I just have some white corn tortillas and I'm also heating up some vegetable oil in my Dutch oven. So I'm just going to pull these out of the package and I'm just going to chop these up into like little triangle pieces. This wasn't a full package. This was actually left over from a previous dinner when I made some like crispy chicken tacos. I made that in a lunchbox video. I want to say it was the last one, but yeah. So that was kind of my inspiration for making the chips. Um, I just had this like over half bag full of tortillas and I didn't know what to do with them. So I figured it was finally time to fry up some chips. So once that oil is nice and hot, I'm just going to drop a few in at a time, just like a single layer. I didn't want to like overcrowd it or anything. So I did have to do this in several batches, obviously, but it wasn't near as bad as I thought it would be. It went super quick. These cooked up in like just a couple of minutes. Um, as time went on, um, I started to kind of overcook some of them, as you can tell, but it's all good. You live and learn. But I did hit those with a little sea salt as they come out come out of the oil but here's everything all tied together this was super super good 
And I absolutely love that lime marinade mix. I'm definitely going to stock up. Up next, I made the best pizza that I have ever made, and it is this bacon cheeseburger pizza, and I just kind of made it up as I went, but I did follow the same pizza dough recipe that I pretty much always use. I've made it many times, and I will link that in my description box, but basically, you just add a package of yeast to a cup of warm water with about a tablespoon of either sugar or honey. Um, I did use sugar this time, and then I just let that yeast activate for 10 minutes until it's nice and foamy. And then I add in a teaspoon of salt and two tablespoons of olive oil. So you'll need three cups of flour. I normally use all purpose for this since I always have that on hand, but my local grocery store actually has some bread flour that caught my eye, and I really wanna start getting into making like different breads and stuff. But of course, it's also good for pizza dough. So. I just added in half of that at a time. Um, I do have my dough hook attachment on my KitchenAid mixer and I just let that go until it formed a ball and pulled away from the sides and until nothing sticks to my hands. And once it gets to that point, I let it knead for six minutes. I like to set a timer and that is it uh, besides the rising part. So here I'm just kind of, you know, forming it into a better ball. I'm going to drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil and I'm just going to kind of roll it around and make sure that the bowl is kind of coated in the olive oil just that way nothing like dries out. So I'm going to get this covered with some cling wrap and I'm just going to let that sit there for an hour to rise. I'm also going to go ahead and prep the bacon just to get it out of the way. So I've added it to a cookie sheet and placed it in a cold oven. I set my temperature to 400 degrees and the timer for 20 minutes. Uh, this was a thick cut bacon but as you can see it's perfectly crispy. It's not shrewd up this is definitely my favorite method to cook and bake in uh, so here it is after the hour as you can see it has risen a lot and now is the super easy part just to assemble the pizza so I've sprayed my pizza pan down slapped my dough down and got it shaped to the pan uh, for the pizza sauce I decided to go with like a small can of tomato sauce as well as about a tablespoon of mustard. I seasoned it up with some onion powder and garlic powder as well as some Worcestershire sauce. So that's definitely screaming a cheeseburger to me. So of course I got that stirred together. I gave it a little bit of a taste test uh, since I was just kind of doing my own thing. Like I said, I wasn't following a recipe and it did need some salt and pepper, but after I got that added, it was perfect. So I am gonna add all of that down to my dough. We like a really saucy pizza, but if you are not like that, you may just wanna add half and then you can store the rest, like you know, either in the refrigerator or the freezer. And I'm sure you can find another use for it. But yeah, I just got that spread out and I am going to add a layer of some shredded mozzarella cheese. I also really think that pepper jack cheese would go great with this. Um, I did go ahead and cook up some ground beef. I had a package in my freezer for a while. It came like in a family pack and it was less than a pound. I didn't weigh it out to see how much it was, but I could not think for the longest time what to do with it. So I was like, a pizza topping will be perfect. But I just cooked that up with some salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. Of course, strain the grease and just sprinkled it all over the pizza. And now I am just taking that bacon that I cooked up earlier in the day uh, that, you know, is obviously cooled down and crumbled up added that to the top. I like never cook pizza with bacon for some reason, but after this one, I'm going to start adding it to so many different variations because it really makes a difference. But yeah, I'm also going to take some sharp cheddar cheese that I shredded up, sprinkle that on top and bake it at 500 for like 10 to 12 minutes. So while that was in the oven, I'm going to go ahead and prepare this bacon ranch crunch salad. It's just one of those salad kits that you can pick up at pretty much any grocery store now that everyone's always raving about. Um, and I never buy these for the simple fact that there is green onions in like 99% of them. And I mean, I hate that about myself, but I just do not like them. So I took the time to like pick out every one that I could see. And I just gave them to Josh because, you know, he doesn't mind that. Um, but that worked out just fine. And we both really enjoyed it. Um, and I did add the extra bacon pieces that I didn't use on the pizza and just threw that on in. So Anyways, here is the pizza as soon as I pulled it from the oven and I just knew that it needed something. So I decided to chop up some of these dill pickle slices and um, I did add those on like after I sliced the pizza. That way they would kind of stay in place if you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, that was that. Here's my plate. Um, you probably can't tell like in this clip, but this is like a big slice of pizza. I know it don't look it, but it really is. And that crust is like kind of thick. So one is plenty with like a good side salad, but 
like I said, really incredible. Um, if you like bacon cheeseburgers and you like pizza, you have got to try this. 10 out of 10. Next is one of my personal favorites. I know that I've shared this at least two times this year on my channel, but just in case you missed it, this is how I do my vodka pasta. So I start by melting down about a half a tablespoon of butter and I add in about a tablespoon of olive oil. Once that's nice and hot, I just throw in a big spoonful of minced garlic and I let that cook for at least a minute just until it's nice and fragrant. And then I add in a little bit of onion powder just to kind of replace the actual onion that is supposed to go in this dish. I do like the flavor from the powder. Um, the recipe that I'm going to link in my description box doesn't call for the red pepper flake, so it is optional, but I have learned that I really love the little bit of spice that that gives. So this started to brown like really quick and whenever that happens, I start to panic. So I forgot to show y'all the bottle of vodka that I use, but it's just the Grey Goose kind. Uh, but of course, any vodka would work and I do let that cook out for at least a minute. And then I add in four tablespoons of tomato paste and I'm just going to cook that for a few minutes. And that tomato paste is really going to like coat that garlic and prevent it from burning. Not to mention like the crazy depth of flavor that it's going to give the sauce. Anytime I saute tomato paste like that and cook it out for a few minutes, it just does something really special to a dish, I'm telling you. Uh, but now I'm just going to add in about three-fourths a cup of some heavy whipping cream. I'm going to take out my little silicone whisk and just combine those two things together. And then it's going to turn into this like pale orange, really smooth sauce. And it thickens like instantly. So now you're just going to season it to taste with some salt and pepper. So I am using some sea salt as well as some freshly cracked black pepper. And then I have cooked up half a box of penne noodles and added that in. And then I'm just whipping out my block of Parmesan cheese and shredding some over the pasta. I also reserved some of the pasta water while I was draining my pasta. So I'm going to add that in and that's just going to help your sauce like stretch further and to kind of thin it out just a little bit. So it's like the perfect ratio of sauce to pasta but yeah this meal comes together like insanely quick i can have this on the table in less than 15 minutes and i say it every time but it just tastes like it came from a fancy restaurant and yeah it's just my go-to because i always have the ingredients on hand to make it and i love that it's meatless i just love everything about it like i said definitely one of my absolute favorite meals and I just served it with some garlic cheddar biscuits that were actually left over from Red Lobster. These clips are kind of all over the place but I will show that trip to Red Lobster at the end of this video. We normally have dinner at my parents house at least one night of the week so this is my dad's chicken and noodles. This is not a soup. It's on the thicker side and it's less brothy. I love that he uses dark meat in this. It's super simple but it's really good and he serves it with cornbread. This night, we were really feeling some like boneless barbecue ribs. It's been a while, so I picked up this package of the pork country style ribs. As you can see, it's less than $4 for this package, which is the perfect amount for my family. Um, if you have a bigger family, of course, you'll want to like double or even triple this recipe, but it's just four of us and, you know, both of our kids are small. They don't want to eat a lot of meat right now anyways. They're more about the side, so... I know my family well, and like I said, this is the perfect amount for us, so I just wanted to throw that out there before someone said that, you know, this isn't enough or whatever. But yeah, so now I'm just seasoning both sides with some Laurie seasoned salt. And I went ahead and measured out a half a cup of water. And to that, I'm going to add in a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. And if you are wondering why I use another measuring cup to add it into a measuring cup, it's not because I'm bad at math. Um, it's just simply because all of the writing on that cup has completely disappeared over the years. But can't bring myself to throw it away. It's still usable. So yeah, I just added that to the bottom of my pan, covered it with some tinfoil, and I cooked it at 300 degrees for two and a half hours. And we will talk about that time in just a second. But for now, we're just going to drain off all of that liquid and discard it. And you're going to pull out your favorite barbecue sauce. We really love the Honey Chipotle by Sweet Baby Ray's. I'm going to drizzle some over the top. And then I'm just going to take my silicone brush and spread that out. And that's just going to go under the broiler for about two to three minutes just to kind of let it caramelize onto the ribs. Ideally, you would want to flip it over and repeat it, but I was terrified of like really overcooking it. So these ribs did turn out good. They tasted great, but they were on the dry side. And this happens pretty much every time I attempt to make these boneless ribs. I did so much research on it to try to make them like perfectly juicy. And you know, this recipe had rave reviews and 
I don't know, maybe I'm just buying like the wrong type of meat, but if any of you guys have like a great method for like juicy boneless ribs, the pork ribs specifically, because I love the price of them, love the flavor, just please let me know. I need some help in that department. But yeah, I served it with some green beans and a loaded baked potato, one of my all-time favorite sides. Um, and I always have to have A1 sauce on my baked potato. So good. Now on to the last meal that I'm going to be cooking in this video. We just had a simple sloppy joe night using some canned manwich and everything that you see here I already had on hand so I didn't have to go to the store for anything which is always super nice and this is just one of those dinners that require like zero thought and I'm probably about to get off on a little tangent but it's just how I've been feeling lately you know I have realized that over the last couple of years I kind of stopped filming meals like this, even though we have simple stuff like often. Um, I just think to myself, you know, nobody wants to see this. Anybody can make this. Um, you know, it's not new or Pinterest worthy, but y'all, that is not me. I'm not the type of person that wants to cook Pinterest worthy meals every night. And I want to get back to, you know, showing the real stuff like this is reality and you know, I started my channel on showing y'all everything that I fed my family, even if it was like a frozen pizza. And going into the New Year's, I want to show more of that. I never want to come off as something that I'm not. I don't want to be like everybody else. I just want to be myself. And I'm a normal person, just like you. I'm just a mom trying to survive and raise two kids in this crazy world. I'm nowhere near a chef. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time, but I did want to take the time to let y'all know that I'm so thankful for y'all for wanting to see this and for just being so sweet and supportive. Also, you know, like if you have kids yourself, you probably know that they much prefer stuff like this over stuff that you've spent all day long on. So this is just a message to myself and to other YouTubers. It's okay to show really basic things. Now I'm just going to end this video by giving y'all a little peek into Josh and I's date night at Red Lobster. It's been a while it feels like since we went to a restaurant alone and I do feel it's very important to make some alone time with your spouse. It makes a huge difference but I hope you all enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.